starting our show at WSU Vancouver and the Corpse Plant. It's having a little bit of trouble today. It's somewhat wilted in the heat. We're here because, well, it's pretty cool to look at, but also because it ties in with what we're gonna be talking about on the show today, and that is heat. In fact, there's a new scientific report out that shows that the heat waves we've been experiencing, they're not going away. In fact, they're gonna keep getting worse year after year. It's something many of us do not look forward to. Honestly, not really. Um, I like a nice 80 degree summer. Um, yeah, pretty mellow, but uh, yeah, definitely not looking forward to super hot summers. Well, I think a lot of us can agree with that. To help us see what's coming, though, a nonprofit has created a tool called Risk Factor. It allows you to get an educated guess on how heat, floods, and fires will affect you and your home in the next 30 years. You can even find out how much money you'll likely spend on your heating and cooling bills 30 years into the future. Here's how it all works. You put your address in here, and Risk Factor tells you if your location is most likely to face flood, fire, or heat in the next 30 years. And so we decided to take a look at Goose Hollow in the neighborhood that we are in here in Portland. Risk Factor told us we'll most likely see an impact from heat where we'll double the number of days of 90 and above in 30 years. Let's zoom out now and head east to Pendleton where all three factors, heat, flood and fire, are expected to also make an impact. The address we looked up has a very small chance of wildfire impacting it this year. It's just 0.21 percent, but Year over year, that percentage continues to grow. Eventually, the home has an 8.5% chance of facing a wildfire at least once over the life of the 30-year mortgage. And then let's head even farther east to Wallawa, where flooding is gonna be the biggest risk factor. The random property we picked off Highway 82 right next to the river could see floodwaters as deep as eight feet during a major flood right now. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But in the next 30 years, the tool predicts that amount could rise by six more inches, and that's spreading into homes and neighborhoods. Even though it does sound small, just one inch of flooding in your home can cause major damage to the structure and, of course, to your belongings. So why does this specific tool matter? Well, we talked to Jeremy Porter. He's the chief researcher at First Street Foundation. They're the ones who created this risk map. He says they wanted to create a more impactful and easy to digest map to help all of us understand climate change. And instead of forecasting like way out 100 years from now, which some do, they focused on just the next 30 years. And by the way, he says the heat is coming. On the western uh, half of the country, the, the, the temperatures are a little bit lower, but we do see what are called local hot day heat waves happen at a higher, higher probability. So those are just as important. Uh, the Weather Service actually calls those local heat waves lethal, uh, heat, lethal, lethal uh, extreme heat events because of the fact that people aren't acclimated to the temperatures and what we saw in Portland last year, what we've seen in Seattle. Uh, this year and last year are, are really the same, uh, that, that sort of local hot day heat wave uh, uh, effect. And, and in the, on the western part of the country, we actually see a high, the highest probability of those heat waves relative to the rest of the country. And we have talked about how dangerous these stretches of heat are. After all, more than 100 people died statewide during last year's heat dome event. Here's Jeremy again explaining why heat is particularly dangerous. The National Weather Service actually calls heat and extreme heat exposure the deadliest or one of the most lethal uh, climate perils. And it, it is because of that prolonged exposure to extreme heat events and to, to uh, sort of high temperatures that, that have uh, enormous health implications. It only takes us getting to 80 degree health index where, or heat index where people start to respond with dehydration and fatigue. Uh, heat cramps. If you go into the 90 degree and 100 degree thresholds and you're starting to get in the heat stroke uh, level. So people that are outside all day long, they're, they're generally exposed to um, even higher temperatures than what we see on the heat index because they're working oftentimes on, in, on concrete and in, in places that tend to be hotter or, or on roofs or doing construction and those types of things where they bear the brunt of the heat exposure. It's also important to remember our infrastructure, the local, state, federal level, it was all built for weather that we're used to. Here's Jeremy again explaining how the increase in our power usage for things like air conditioning units could affect us on the future in a larger scale. Our infrastructure is really developed for the weather that we're acclimated to. So some people may have 
air conditioners, the further north you go, the less and less likely you are to have people that actually even have air conditioners. So there's a, there's this chance of a prolonged exposure to uh, extreme heat events without actually having protections from things like in the south, air conditioning is ubiquitous. Everywhere you go, air, there's air conditioning on and it's there to protect people in the in those areas from the, that extreme heat exposure. Uh, in, the, in, in places where that doesn't exist, there's both a lack of personal protection from having access to air conditioning, but there's also problems with the infrastructure grids, which are built to supply energy for a certain level of cooling degree days, which is the industry standard for how hard and how often air conditioners have to run during extreme heat events. If it gets warmer, the, the grid itself may not be able to keep up with the power load, and you may see brownouts, you may see, even see blackouts uh, in the worst case scenarios. So there is there is some concern over those those uh, those areas where they're just not acclimated to that type of of uh, extreme heat heat event. That does not sound fun. So, what do you think about this? Do you have questions about how to use that tool? Do you have other thoughts or concerns about global warming in general? Share your thoughts with us. You can send an email. The address is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. Our phone number is 503-226-5090. We really do want to hear from you. I look forward to hearing what you have to say.